Hi there, my name is Chris Steinkamp and I'm the beekeeper at the Urban Ecology Center. Uh, today I'd like to share with you what I know about honeybees and beekeeping and I'll even introduce you to the beehive we have at our Menominee Valley location. Let's get started. My job as a beekeeper is to provide a safe habitat for the honeybees to live in. Usually this habitat is a wooden box with access to fresh water and flowering plants. I also make sure the bees are healthy by doing a hive inspection a few times during the warm season. Thanks to these efforts, we benefit by being able to observe and learn from these honeybees up close. These bees will also help pollinate many of the plants in the surrounding area. The bees we keep at the Urban Ecology Center have the scientific name Apis mellifera, the honeybee. They are not native to North America. Rather, they were brought to this continent in the 1600s by European settlers. They have since been naturalized in our landscape and are an essential part of our agricultural system. There are three different roles that honeybees have in the hive. The queen, the workers, and the drones. There is only one queen in any hive and she runs the whole show. Her job is to lay the eggs that will spawn the hive's next generation of bees. The queen also produces chemicals, known as pheromones, that guide the behaviors of the other bees. The workers are all the female bees, and their role is to forage for food, such as pollen and nectar from flowers, build and protect the hive, and clean and circulate air by beating their wings. The workers are the only bees most people ever see flying around outside the hive. The drones are all the male bees, and their purpose is to mate with queens. Several hundred live in each hive during the spring and summer. They are bigger than the workers, and they don't have a stinger. But come winter time, when the hive goes into survival mode, the drones are kicked out. There are three main types of hives that many beekeepers use as a habitat. Those are the vertical, the horizontal, and the open cavity hive. At the Urban Ecology Center, our bees live in a horizontal hive, also called a top bar hive. In this type of hive, the bees build their home horizontally as they grow and expand. The benefit of this hive is that the beekeeper can easily access all parts of the hive when doing a hive inspection. To build the hive, bees secrete wax from glands on their abdomen. Over the course of the summer, they will build their hive larger and larger. So at the Urban Ecology Center, we have to make sure that they have enough horizontal space to expand into. They'll fill this space with honey and pollen and use that as a food source over the winter. That's right, the bees stay in the same hive all winter long and emerge again as the weather warms up in the spring. Most people keep bees because it means that they can harvest honey. Honey bees will produce 40 to 100 pounds of honey every year, usually twice what they actually need to survive the winter. A good beekeeper should only collect the extra honey. At the Urban Ecology Center's hive, we only collect a few pounds of honey, as these hives are primarily used for education and observation. Extra honey can be collected either in the fall or the spring. Now to retrieve the honey, I put on a beekeeper's veil to protect myself from the bees. If I'm doing my job correctly, the bees won't be angered and won't try to sting me, but it's good to be cautious just in case. Honey bees produce honey as a food source for the hive, so we're only collecting a small amount of honey they produce. The rest we leave for the bees. It's essential to leave enough honey for the bees to survive throughout the winter. To make honey, bees collect nectar from flowers around their hive. Honey bees will usually stay within a mile or two, but they might fly as far as six miles away from the hive to find flowers. They carry the nectar in something we call a honey crop, or a honey stomach, which is located on the abdomen of the bee's body. It's kind of like a second stomach they use just to hold nectar. When they bring the nectar back to the hive, they fan it with their wings to reduce the amount of moisture in it. Once this nectar is only about 20% water, it's considered to be honey, and the bees will seal it with wax for future consumption. The low level of moisture, in addition to low pH levels, which means it's highly acidic, and high sugar content, makes it so honey can last forever. Bacteria just can't survive in that environment. We've been talking about honeybees today, but I wanted to take a moment to mention the hundreds of other bees and pollinators that are important in a healthy ecosystem. 
There are over 400 other species of bees that have been identified here in Wisconsin. Additionally, butterflies, moths, beetles, flies, wasps, ants, and hummingbirds all pollinate plants. To support habitats for all of these pollinators, you can cultivate flowering plants, eliminate the use of pesticides, which are harmful to insects, and provide nesting sites. All right, thank you so much for joining me to learn about honeybees and beekeeping. Uh, this spring or summer, when you're outside enjoying the nice weather and the sunshine, take a look around and see if you can find any bees pollinating flowers around you. We're very, very lucky to share this planet with such fascinating insects. Until next time.